If you're a woman, freezing your eggs may seem like a good way to delay having children to a more suitable time in your life. But now specialists have been urging women to freeze their eggs in their early 20s to increase their chances of having a child. But this morning we're asking, should women start to rely on this procedure? Well, here to talk it over, we have the TV personality Katie Hopkins and joining us from Dorset, the science broadcaster, Dr Emily Grossman. That's Dr Emily there and Katie is here with me in the studio. And Dr Emily, I'll come to you first. Um, you won't mind me saying, you froze your eggs at the age of 38. Talk me through the process yeah. with you deciding to take this step and why. Sure, so I kind of got to my mid 30s and um, everybody around me was having kids. <laughs> I guess a lot of people know what that feels like. And I wasn't in a position in my life, in my career, in my relationship world to, to be having children. But I went to um, a really uh, amazing talk at the Cheltenham Science Festival called the Fertility Time Bomb, which really alerted me to the fact that fertility rates dropped by half from 35 to 40, half again from 40 to 42, rates of miscarriages go up. And I started to feel really anxious that, you know, I wasn't at that point ready to have a child, but I wanted to make sure that in the future I wouldn't miss out on that chance. I was seeing people around me, women around me of my age, rushing into relationships, having kids, children with partners who they were perhaps not quite ready to do so and make relationships ending up not quite working out, being a single parent, not that there's anything wrong with that. And I was seeing women in their late 30s, early 40s, meeting the love of their lives and actually realising that it was going to be a real challenge, if not impossible, for some of them to conceive and to have a child. And I saw the devastating impact that that had on them. And so, were you made aware of the risks? Sort of, because it's not a guarantee and that's how it's being sold to a absolutely. lot of women. No, I, I don't think it's being sold as a guarantee and I absolutely was made aware of the risks. I did my own research. When I decided to have it done a few years after that date, um, I did my own research. I found out the figures. I found out that the success rates are actually a lot higher than has been put out in a lot of the tabloid newspapers. Um, if you freeze your eggs before the age of 35, it's about a 40% success rate per cycle, which is actually equivalent, if not more, to the success rates for IVF. And if you wait till your sort of late 30s, early 40s, it does go down 20, 25% per cycle. But that's still a pretty high, you know, chance compared to facing the possibility of not being able to have okay. your own children naturally. Well, and yes, there are risks. It is expenses. Okay. But uh, I think it's absolutely worth well, that's Dr. Emily's story. Um, Katie, it's called social egg freezing because women are having careers now. Uh, they're not meeting uh, Mr. Right in their 20s as they used to a few decades ago. So a lot of women are going down this path. You don't think it's the right one? No, I think this idea of social egg freezing, that's a bizarre phrase in itself. It's more social engineering. I think listening to that lady there just talk a whole world of tech and statistics and numbers and figures and talk about freezing eggs. It's a bizarre idea. You know, what happened to just living your life, rolling with the punches? Most people's lives, including mine are defined largely by the mistakes we made and they turn out to be rather glorious in the end. I think women these days have become, especially younger women, have become so prescriptive about their lives. They're used to going on Bumble or Tinder or whatever, deciding how high their boyfriend needs to be, how tall must he be, what colour hair must he be, what colour eyes. And now they're wanting to do the same with their baby, decide what age to have it at. I just think women want too much control and let's not forget. Well, you're talking about men do exactly the same thing, but they have the luxury of not having to worry about the bio yeah, clock, it turns so. out we're not entirely equal. Men and women, we are different. Women now think they can choose their gender as well. It's just this notion you can choose everything in your life. And guess what? Big news, young people. You can't. And let's not forget, people talk about harvesting eggs. It's not Cinderella or Snow White skipping around in the garden amongst the chickens with their basket, plopping eggs in in the sunshine with birds tweeting. I've had friends who've had this procedure done. They balloon up like marshmallows. They're injected. They have stickers on. They have It's like going through going IVF, in. and we hear a lot it's of hideous. about how stressful that is on What's the body and on your mind. What's that got to do with I mean, really. Some of the worst things I've done in my life have been worked out for the very best in the end. Well, and what's you can wrong with giving woman. yourself an option? It's, it's, a, it's like asking a mate to hold a place in the queue in case you get there. If you've lived your life and you've got to 35 and you haven't found someone to have kids with mm. yet, it's probably because you're too uptight, too anally retentive about the way you live your life and you need to be a bit more flexible. Take a few risks, live your life big. And I say to young people, don't freeze your eggs, go out there, find the fun, live your life, roll with life's okay. roller coaster. So, uh, Dr Emily, Katie there saying there must be something wrong with you if you haven't had kids naturally by the time you're in your 30s. I don't think that's the case. I mean, society has evolved and biology simply hasn't kept up with us.
you know, that's, that, that, that is evident in so many different ways about how we're living our lives now, how we're having families, the different family dynamics that we have, the different setups that we have, which are absolutely supportive of having children, of having families, but just at a later age than we used to be able to. Okay, so, so yes, women are... Well, are I wanted to careers. ask, do you, can I ask you a question? Do you mind awfully? Um, have you got children now and how old are you? No, I don't have children now. I froze my eggs um, at the age of 38. I've been through a few cycles of egg freezing and I've now just turned 40. So you're 40. So when you rock up at the school gate and the rest of the mums there are 22, are you not going to feel like the old geriatric whose grandma's come to pick up her children that day? And is it not bizarre that you've chosen to put your body through this just because you couldn't find someone to have children with earlier? I don't think it's bizarre at all. I think that if I had had children earlier in life, I wouldn't have had the wisdom, the emotional maturity, the financial stability, and actually the real desire to have them. Do you think that having I arthritis with children is more fun? Well. Having arthritis and having children is not my more mom, fun. You don't mom, know everything when you have children, and that's OK. Young people seem to think you need to know everything these days. You don't. Katie, we are living longer, though. People are living well into their 80s yeah, and 90s. So we are living longer, but that doesn't mean you need to have a geriatric as a mother. I've seen the old... But, People your class is a geriatric child. when you're over 30 having a child. What, what age Women do you have like your this, first child? I had my first child at 28. Mm. I know I well, look been about 105 Well, you'd have been classed as geriatric then, wouldn't you, under the NHS? I feel like a geriatric half the time. And what I certainly wouldn't want to do at my humble age of 43, and I know most viewers think I'm 65, is I would not be want to be staggering to the school playground with my arthritis just because I didn't have the perfect moment to meet someone. I think what's happened is women have become so choosy about their partner. No one's ever good enough and they've forgotten to find the fun in life. Go out and make mistakes. OK, That's what we're supposed well, to do. Dr Emily, I, I'm one of the I cheesy have... ones, apparently, so I'm with you on this one. <laughs> Speak up for us cheesy women. Have you had I, children yet? No. Look, How old I, are you? I, I'm 40. I've just turned 40. And are you, gonna, are you scared that you won't have I, children? Uh, no, I've chosen not to freeze my eggs. But Dr Emily has, and you still, you're still holding out hope. Absolutely. I have a wonderful life. I have, I'm super fit. I'm super healthy. Did you enjoy I have a having your time. eggs harvested? My, 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 Did you enjoy having your eggs harvested? <laughs> Did you enjoy My the process? Second... Did you enjoy the process of having your it. eggs harvested? Had... You did enjoy it? Yeah, I did. I liked okay, it because it gave really me hope. Well, she, she's empowered. She feels like she's doing something about it. Would that be a fair assessment? You're not empowered if you're having your eggs dragged Absolutely. out of your body. You're empowered if you live a big life, a, a happy beautiful. life, and you have happy children. My children are very happy. OK, well, both leading very happy lives in very <laughs> different ways. Dr Emily Grossman, thank you very much. I have chicken or eggs. OK, uh, Katie Hopkins, thank you very much.